one tarantula. If you could only keep one tarantula, which one is the best? Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Tarantula Tuesday. And if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that other stuff. It definitely helps out. This week we'll be covering a topic that I get asked all the time. Whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, people are always asking me this. And the question comes in many different forms. What's your favorite tarantula? If you could only keep one tarantula, what would it be? What's the jewel of your collection? What one tarantula do you recommend? Essentially, they're all asking the same question. What is the best tarantula? Now, of course, this is just my opinion. There's hundreds and hundreds of tarantulas out there and everybody's got their favorite. In fact, in almost every video, I say this is my favorite tarantula. But in reality, there's one tarantula that in my opinion is far and above all the others. And I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna give you the reasons why I think this is the best tea. And if you don't have one of these in your collection, you should seriously consider adding it right away. <laughs> Anytime someone asks you a question like that, it's kind of like picking your favorite kid. There are so many tarantulas out there. So many of them are exceedingly amazing. It's really difficult to kind of narrow it down to just one. In fact, there's always this internal debate going on anytime someone asks me that because there's at least three or four that I hold in pretty high regard. So I'm just gonna briefly tell you about a few of my favorite tarantulas and then I'm gonna let you know which one I think is the best. start off one of the best tarantulas out there and definitely a jewel of my collection is the Harpectera pulchripes or the Golden Blue Lake Baboon. I'm a huge fan of this tarantula. I've got a couple of them in my collection that I've been raising up since they were slings. In fact, I got them as a wedding present from Tanya over at Fear Not Tarantulas, so that just adds a whole nother level of awesome to them. They have some sentimental value, but I love the bright gold coloration with the blue legs and their feeding response. There's a lot of things about this tarantula that's just awesome. But when I'm suggesting a tarantula to somebody they I don't even really know, maybe they only have a few tarantulas or no tarantulas at all, it's probably not very responsible of me to suggest they get an old world baboon. So even though I love that tarantula, it's not what I'm considering the best tarantula out there. Another tarantula high up on my list of favorites is the Theraphosa sturmi or the Burgundy Goliath bird eater. Now this is an awesome tarantula, amazing feeding response, has a huge size that it will grow to, and just looks really cool. It's one of my favorite display tarantulas. But the reason I don't suggest it a lot to people is, one, because it does get so large, two, it has some pretty serious urticating hairs, and three, it does have some humidity requirements that makes it not the easiest tarantula out there to care for. That, and it can be pretty fast. Now I'm also a huge fan of this arboreal tarantula and I do suggest it to a lot of new keepers. It's extremely colorful and is one of my favorite all-time teas and that's the Caribbean of Versicolor or the Antilles Pink Toe Tarantula.
It's got just the beautiful contrast of colors. It spends a lot of time out on display, and I love the journey it makes from a spiderling to an adult. It has some pretty drastic changes in color and appearance. It is definitely one of my most favorite tarantulas and a species that I suggest very often. But still, I don't think it's the best species. And one last species that I'm a huge fan of that I think is definitely a staple in the hobby and you should really have one in your collection if you don't already. Could actually be like three different species. This is a New World Terrestrial Tarantula, spends a lot of time out on display, has some amazing colorations, and is pretty easy to take care of. Now I'm talking about the Brachypelma homori, or it could also be the Brachypelma baimi, or the Brachypelma emilia. I'm just a huge fan of that red and black or orange and black contrasting of colors. And they're so easy to take care of, and maybe they'll kick some hairs every now and then, but for the most part, they're an awesome species. But to be the best tarantula, I think they're maybe just a little too basic. I think the best tarantula really needs to encompass all of the aspects of the hobby. It needs to have an awesome feeding response, does some amazing webbing, is fairly simple to take care of, and it needs to have some very unique and mind-blowing colors. When you take all of those requirements and put it on the list, there's only one tarantula that measures up. And that is why I think this is the best tarantula. So my all-time favorite tarantula is the Chromatopelma cyanopubescens, or the green bottle blue tarantula. I've actually already made a Karen Husbandry video on this species, and I'll link it up above. In fact, it was one of the first species that I ever covered in Tarantula Tuesday. And because of that, I've gotten a lot of requests from people to remake the video. Because I essentially shot it all with like my cell phone handheld and threw in some pictures I got from other people, and the quality just isn't up to what I'm doing these days. And I completely understand why people would want me to remake that, but all the information would be the same. It would just kind of be adding some new pictures. So I think this will have to suffice for those of y'all that have been asking for a remake of that video. But this is an awesome species, and I suggest this for any level of keeper. If you don't have one of these in your collection, you need to take care of that right away. The first reason I think this is the best species of tarantula is because of its coloration. Anytime someone comes over to check out my tarantula collection, that is usually the tarantula that they're the most impressed by. With its greens and blues and reds and blacks, it's a great contrast of colors on one specimen. Especially right after a molt when they're really bright and the colors just pop. You'd be hard pressed to find another tarantula that's equally as beautiful. Another reason I think this tarantula is the best is similar for the reason that I'm a huge fan of the Carabina Versicolor. It's because this tea makes quite a journey from a spiderling to an adult. The patterns and colors that it is as a sling change a little bit as it becomes a juvenile, and then when it's an adult, it has its completely different kind of look. But at each stage of its life, it's a gorgeous and unique tarantula to view.
third reason I think this is the best tarantula is because of its feeding response. This tarantula never disappoints when it's feeding time, unless it's in primo, in which case it doesn't need it all. Every time I drop a cricket or a mealworm or a roach or whatever's on the menu, this tarantula will come out of its burrow or jump across the enclosure to take down that prey. And that brings me to the fourth reason this is the best. And that's because of what it does in its enclosure. It's a semi-arboreal species, meaning that it will live terrestrially, but also likes to have some height in its enclosure so it can do some webbing. Because it will climb on any branches or any kind of plant or anything you put inside of its enclosure. And it webs the heck out of the place. There'll be intricate web tunnels going all over the enclosure. And they do like to burrow a little bit as well, especially as slings. So you gotta make sure you give them plenty of substrate. But it's like the best of all three worlds. It's terrestrial, fossorial, and arboreal. Of all the enclosures I have down here in the basement, none of them are webbed up quite as beautifully as my GBB's enclosure. And that's the spiderling, juvenile, and adult. They all look amazing. So if you're looking for a heavy webbing tarantula, this is the species for you. And finally, the fifth reason I think this is the best species, though I'm sure there are plenty other reasons as well, is that it's so freaking easy to take care of. This tarantula likes it dry. You just keep its enclosure arid and you don't have to worry about any kind of humidity requirements. I put a water dish in there, I keep it full and that's like it. And when you're keeping the enclosure dry, you don't have to worry so much about mites and fungus and mushrooms and mold and all the other problems that come along with species that require a higher humidity. As an adult, this tarantula can go weeks without eating, and as long as you're keeping its water dish full, you're not gonna have very many problems. Now, granted, there are a few drawbacks. This tarantula does not like to be held. I mean, I've handled my spiderlings and juveniles a little bit, but once they become an adult, sometimes they're just not in the mood. They can be a little bolty, so it's not the best species to handle. Mine is also a bit of a hair kicker. If I startle it or I'm doing something in its enclosure that it doesn't like, it never hesitates to turn its back and kick some hairs up at me. But like, that's it. Those are the only drawbacks that I can think of. I'm a huge fan of this tarantula. I suggest it to anybody that asks me, and I think that's just gonna be my default go-to. You ask me what tarantula you should get, I'm gonna tell you a GBB. Now, if you wanna check out a care sheet I have on this species, just go to my website, thetarantulacollective.com. You'll also find all kinds of merchandise there and links to other resources like tarantula dealers, podcasts, YouTube channels, all things tarantula related. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Help me get the word out about the channel. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday, so subscribe if you don't wanna miss any future content. And if you wanna support the channel further, just click that join button down below all of my videos and become a member here on YouTube. I also have a Patreon community if you prefer to join there. A link for that is down below in the description. Now, if there's a species out there that you think is better than the GBB, make sure to tell me about it down below in the comments. Change my mind. Well, thank you all for watching and all your support. And don't forget that I'm uploading a new video this Thursday. But if I don't see you then, I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>